So we are talking about the Enlightenment, the age of reason in Europe. Uh, trust in the light of reason alone. Uh, this is important. This is an important section for us today because our whole system that we live under today is based on people being able to reason their lives out. Some people are good at it. Some people are not. So, what what was the Enlightenment and why did it happen? Here's some major generalizations. The Enlightenment was an intellectual and cultural movement in the 18th century or the 1700s. It grew out of the Renaissance and humanism and the quest for knowledge and a growing confidence in human potential and achievement. It was encouraged by new advances in science and math. Um, this spurs directly from the scientific revolution, which we will talk about in the next chapter. But uh, Newton's um, scientific method, we're going we're gonna to use this scientific method for governments and for society. The Enlightenment reached its height in France. Not Britain, no other European nation, France. It was a movement of Europe's intellectuals, uh, the intellectual elite. Uh, and it comes from this growing urban and middle class. Major ideas of the Enlightenment associated with the notion of human progress, the growth and the confidence in the power of human reason, and the belief in scientific principles could be applied to create a better society. And their goal was to, per to perfect society. What does the Enlightenment challenge? It challenged tradition. It challenged religious beliefs and institutions, traditional political models, traditional notions of social order and cultural convention. Deist, uh, or deist rejected much of the Bible and traditional Christian teaching and theology. Not open to rational inquiry or empirical verification. In other words, these are good stories, but you can't prove them historically. Uh, as you see, critical of institutions of the church, wealth, power, and abuses of power and abuses of uh, wealth. Uh, very critical of religious intoleration and violence. In other words, um, why are people fighting over these religions, these different denominations? Uh, deists or deists uh, saw God as a remote and as remote and impersonal. Uh, the classical idea of logos or rational in intelligence of the universe, God basically was like a clockmaker who created an ordered universe but was not involved in it. God did not interact with his creation. People did not relate directly to God. So, the philosophers, these are major thinkers of the Enlightenment. So, the first one we need to know here and talk about is Baron de Montesquieu from 1689 to 1755. Here's some interesting ideas. Uh, he believed that the principles of reason and science could be applied to create a better government. Uh, he admired the British model of government because basically they were constitutionalism. Uh, they were ruled by law, and it was a constitutional monarchy. He writes his book, The Spirit of Laws, in 1748, which you need to know, and look at what he favors. He favors a government uh, based on the separation of powers, and he says that there should be three, uh, there should be three branches. Uh, it is necessary that power checks be in place, that power checks power. Um, power would be balanced between the various classes and the states. This would prevent tyranny and this would promote liberty. Should sound familiar. We base our branches of government off of this book. Voltaire. Uh, he's French and Voltaire's ideas, basically he's critical of French society and government. He writes his book Candide. It's a novel uh, satirizing French society. His political ideas, he's not really a political radical. He sought political reform, 
he favored an enlightened absolute monarchy. It's similar to Hobbes' idea in the Leviathan, which we'll get to. Uh, he did not believe that the people could govern themselves, though. Uh, Voltaire was appointed court historian in 1743 under uh, Louis XIV. Voltaire was not an atheist. Uh, he liked the teachings of Jesus and admired uh, the moral and ethic, ethic, but rejected the idea of Jesus' incarnation and atonement. You can read this. Pantheon in Paris. Basically, Voltaire's tomb is here. Dennis Diedrich, he's also French. He compiled the first encyclopedia, uh, the Rational Dictionary of Science, and uh, the Arts and uh, Crafts. So, Baron Paul de Holbach, de Holbach uh, 1723-1789, he's a confessed atheist, openly hostile to Christians and the church. He, many, many moderate and uh, philosophes saw him as too uh, intolerant and dogmatic. Uh, he believed that man is on a line that nature commands him to follow. He believed that man is no different than a machine. Man is subject to the laws of nature just like any other physical object. And here's some uh, a reading of them you can read. Here's some more. Oh, but every man who reasons soon become an unbeliever. David Hume, he is an English philosopher from 1711 to 1776. Hume's idea, uh, ideas are associated with the modern trend towards skepticism, which is a, a classical Greek um, uh, philosophy. He sought to understand how we know, uh, what we know, as, as uh, epist epistemology. He argued that nothing could be known for certain that could not be verified through direct sense or a direct experience. So it can't be verified unless we experienced it or unless we saw it. So here are some of his, here are some of the things he wrote. Jean-Jacques Rousseau put a star by him. You need to know him as well. He challenged his ideas. He challenged the power of human reason to address all of life's questions. He's associated more with early romanticism than with the enlightenment rationality. The, rem, the Romantic movement was uh, a reaction against the rationalism of the Enlightenment. In other words, the Romantic movement, uh, instead of basing their movement on reason, they based it on nature's laws, not social laws, not reason. But he's important for a couple of reasons. First off, he writes his book, The Social Contract, and this he he popularizes or he come he brings to the population this this idea of popular sovereignty where people held the real power in government not the government officials um, government was ruled by the general will of the people this is important because we operate on this in our government today rousseau believed strongly in human freedom and individual liberty he had he had a more op uh, opportunity he had a more optimistic view of human nature, and he believes people are good by nature. So a little bit more about Rousseau. Uh, he is going to be the one that really pushes for a um, life liberty. You know, uh, people have uh, liberties, um, and one of them is life. Uh, you should be treated by your government um, good. And... Uh, He's known in the psychological world. He was a psychologist as well. He does a lot of work in psychology. And in his older life, he battles uh, insanity. And he didn't like the salons. He didn't like the he didn't like the parties in France. He was more of a introvert. Immanuel Kant. He's Prussian. He stresses intellectual he's, he stresses intellectual freedom and uh, expression. 
what is the Enlightenment essay? Basically explores the issue of moral ethics and virtue. Put a star by John Locke. He's important. Uh, in 1690, he writes this book, Two Treatises on Government. He proposed that all men possess certain natural, li uh, certain natural rights, in other words, unalienable rights, uh, life, liberty, and ownership of property. He says government's main role is to protect these rights. He also said that if uh, government did not protect those rights, any one of those rights, you had the right to rebel against that government and put a new government in. Locke also sought to understand the philosophy of knowledge, uh, how we know what we know. So he writes this book, he, um, or he writes an uh, essay concerning the human understanding. He believed all ideas derived from experience. Uh, each person is born as a blank slate. Uh, human development is determined by education, social institution, environment, and experience. So we'll pick up with uh, this, the impact of the Enlightenment, in part two.